Hello and thank you very much for coming us. And we're working, we're going to work in a few tutorials just to doing everything from scratch, from the geometry generation to doing the maps to running the simulation and everything. A few easy tutorials. So here we're going to work in these geometries, a relatively easy geometry, but we're going to start everything from scratch on shape them with for the geometry and then we do the case but something important that i will talk about our sonic modeling instead of doing geometry because when we do uh cfd we want solids okay so we want a close watertight geometry instead of using surface a lot of people use surface but most of the time the measures and when doing cfd they don't like surfaces or those surfaces that are not uh coincident they are not closer or they are overlapping so it will give you a problem so it's better to talk about uh, a solid so when we generate the solid we're sure that we have that close smooth geometry so we're going to worry this geometry in the link below you can download this drawing so at this point let's go to unshape so i hope you already have the account so as you so just create a new project I will call it pipe. And then we're going to start from scratch. So we have the dimensions, we have the drivings, and we're going to do everything just from zero. Uh, something important as well, I really like when doing a CFD to have a reference point. So it's not like you do your solid model in any point in your space that it doesn't matter if you're going to, 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 to manufacture that or you're working with an additive uh, manufacturer or late machine and doesn't matter where you put it. But in CFD, sometimes it's a good idea to have a reference point. So you see this point here, this is my origin, my zero, zero, zero. So I would like to, to, to draw everything starting from, from, from this point. So I will select this plane, sketch, and now I am in sketch mode. I will be normal to this plane. And now I can sketch everything. So let me show you my strategy. So look at that, we have the drawing here. So I will draw everything starting from here. I have this dimension, I have this radius, but also I have this dimension. But remember, I also can start from the midpoint here. Okay, so I already know also the dimensions. I know that here my radius will be 1.5. So this is going to remember that there are many ways to do uh, to, to generate your solid. So I'm going to do it in this way. Probably for you will be more intuitive to, to, to do it using the mid line. So this is what we talk about design and time. So you choose how you can incorporate those changes in, in a more efficient way. Okay, in this case, for me, it's okay to work in this way. So I will start to add my dimension, my lines. So I will start by drawing and sketch. I don't pay, for the moment, I won't pay uh, attention to the dimension. So I will just will draw this line. Then I will change to here, well, I escape. And then I will tangent arc to this point here. And uh, I have that tangent arc and then this line here so I have my baseline so my approach will be drawing this line and then a circle here and then I would swap everything maybe you can use a lofton okay so it will be the same but it would require uh, a few more clips so now that I have this initial sketch let's put the dimension and a feature that I really like about uh, on shape is that look at that here this is my dimension it should be three but look at that as soon as I put three here it will automatically scale, scale everything contrary to some other uh, cat software do okay so if you do if you use cat sauce or some other cat software you will realize that not, not all of them uh, do this and you will really appreciate the, the, this feature so now that everything has been automatically scaled I can come here and just whoops mistake clip here three my dimension and then I will give this dimension here which is a radius of two okay and then I can add constraints so look at here is a click here I will see my constraints so 
everything has been constrained. And when you see a black line here, there, it means that it's fully constrained, okay? You cannot move it, you cannot modify it, okay? It's fully constrained. And this blue line means it's not fully constrained, it's still you can move. So look at that, it's a click here at this point. I'm able to move it because it's not fully constrained. So I need to add another constraint here. So I want I want to add tangency. So I want to make this line tangent to this arc. And we're done. It's fully constrained. And at this point also, I want to add another part missing here. Look at that. I want to add this small pie here, but I have my reference here. So I have my radius. I have this angle 45 and the length one. So let's do that as well. So I will add a line here, okay, click here, here, so I have a line here that I would like to use as a construction line, okay, I will use it as a reference, so I use this option here, construction line, and see that is, this is a line that for me will be used as a construction line, and then also I will add this line here that it would intersect this arc here, I know that because I have that reference, there, you see that means it is intersecting that point there and also I want to have a reference line so you see that and you convert the reference line and now you add the angle so we know that the angle is okay it's 45 here here so you put your angle 45 and now you have everything they mentioned okay and at this point we add the other line here which have a dimension of one and voila this is our basis cache and remember in when doing the when doing salt modeling in most parametric caps the the core of every 3d part it is a sketch it's quite funny because to do a 3d model you need to start from a 2d sketch so everything you do it first in 2d you you lay out all your dimensions and then you start to do to, to do those operations in 3d like revolve fit or lofton okay so here we have everything done and we're only missing here is generating the circle here the profile that we're going to start and also the circle here so we have a first sketch, everything they mentioned, and then let's do the the profile that we, we would like to, to extrude here. So here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new plane, okay? And I want to create that plane from a point and a line, okay? So this is point normal. So I will define here point and the line, and then you will have a new plane normal to that line passing through that point the, that plane is coinciding with this right plane okay but just to show you how to generate it okay so now we draw here sketch okay and then we sketch a circle okay remember it doesn't matter the dimension then we start to to to, to add dimensions and constraints so what i would like to do is make I would like to make this circle tangent to this point or coincidence to, to, to this point. So what I do is choose here, coincident constraint, make it a coincident. It will pass through that point. Then I will give it a dimension, which is one. Okay. So see that we're building everything, but kind of it is that it doesn't align with this point. So I want to do this point vertical with this point so we have this vertical constraint this point vertical with this one and now it is fully aligned okay so now we have this profile remember design intent it might be easier to do it in another way i chose to do it in this way for me it's worse but there are many ways to to, to do things so you can do it in the way that's most comfortable to do to you so i have this circle there and now I would generate another circle here passing normal to this line and passing through this point so I proceed in the same way by the way you can choose a different approach for instance you can choose offset 
and you can offset a plane here that would pass through this one so it's up to you but probably this is the, the easiest way so choose okay and it just shows the line and the point and there you have your plane and now I will sketch in this plane so now I can sketch the here okay and I will sketch a circle passing through the, with the center here. So to make things easier here, I can use uh, underlying geometry. So I can use this uh, feature here. Use. So what it will do, I will click in this vertex and it will project this vertex in my current plane. You see that now this vertex is available to use. Previously it wasn't available. So now I can do like select the circle and I will see that I can select this point and now you draw your circle. You give dimensions. In this case, the dimensions are 0 0.5, and you have it there. Okay. So we can. Uh, we, I could have done that in the previous case. Put the circle anywhere, and then I would. I would. I kind of start to to use constraints. So it's up to you. Remember, you have many ways to 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 accomplish your your goal. Your... Okay. And at this point, you see that. Basically, now that what we need to do is just a few uh, operation features. So look at that here. We can do extrusion. So an extrusion will do it in just in one direction. So extrusion in this case is not good for us. Revolve. We could use revolve, but it's not the best approach. It will take many kids. So now, so the best approach in this case will be sweet. Also, you could you could use laugh. But love, we will require to generate another profile here and then your gay lines curve. So probably you see that the best approach to use is one is sweat. So sweat basically cons consists in selecting a profile and then a path. And I want to sweat that profile along that path. Remember, this path need, 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 needs to, to, to intersect in some point that this profile, okay? And this is what we have. Again, you have a few options. For instance, you want to keep the profile orientation. You can do like this, and you see that the profile is always in this same orientation. For us, it's not OK. So this is what we have. You see the, the check mark here. And voila, we have the geometry. And then we need just to add this one. And again, we, we can do a swap, but we're missing the line here. So in this case, we do an extrusion. So I select my profile, and then we give the dimension. So I will just click on the triad and put it here. And remember here, the operation, you can choose a new solid if you want to create a new solid. But if you choose add, it will do automatically the Boolean operation between these two. And you want to merge it with the previous bar. So click here, and this is it. We have here our solid model with all our dimensions. And look at that. If in, at one point you want to change something, you can go back to the underlying sketches. And for instance, if you want to change this dimension, you just change this one, and then it will, it will be done automatically. OK, so this one I will put here 4, and then there so look at this this option here final is the preview so by default it's not selected you put here you see in real time every modification so if you put five now you see the modification real time okay so if i change this one as well so remember this is what we call design intent okay so you want to incorporate new modifications in the most efficient way so at this point, I think this is it. We have this geometry. The next case, we're going to do the meshing and then running this, this, this relatively easy geometry. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you in our next tutorial. Bye.